Okay, so here we go. This is the plan. So we're going to go into creating the user, uh, the database. This is all done here in um, PHP my admin. Okay. Then here, this is all done inside uh, Visual Studio. Uh, what have I got? 2012. Just for something different. So here's the plan, right? This is the database. This is the database fields. This is the database table inside the website we're going to be actually creating uh, pages that will fill this field retrieve it so that'll be our list okay um, so we create we'll list uh, we'll be able to update it and then we'll be able to delete it which is the main functionality for all databases so the first thing we're going to do is the PHP my admin stuff so to do that let's jump here into localhost again so as you can see at the moment localhost is still empty so I'm going to do is now I'm going to go to PHP my admin the username is root and the password is actually password. Okay, now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the user. So this user is designed to actually have, uh, is used specifically for this database. So if you're building multiple websites, this is what you do. You build a user per database. So now I'm going to add user. I'm going to call this guy uh, student underscore USR. The host will be localhost and the password will be password. Okay, so if I click on that you can see password. Because it's local, I'm just going to check all the global privileges and click on go. Now that I've created a user, I'm going to create the database. And the database will be student underscore db. Okay, so once I've done that, I'll click create. Over here on this side, student db. Doesn't have any tables. Table is where we store the information. So in here, I'm going to create the table called student. So let's have a look. I'm going to have one, two, three, four fields, okay? This field is one that we get the system to worry about. These are the ones that get filled out by people. So I want four columns. And my first one will be an ID. Then I will have F name for first name, L name for second name, and subject. So the type, okay, so int means it's a whole number, which is exactly what I want for the ID. F name, it's a varchar. F name, uh, L name is a varchar, and subject is a varchar. Lengthwise, that'll come in at 11 automatically. Here, this is basically how many characters long do you think a first name will be? I'm going to say we'll have no more than 150 characters for the first name and the last name, and our subject will just put down at 100. Back in the old days, that used to be important, when memory was pretty much a rarity. Nowadays, not so big a deal. But, it always helps for speed. Okay, so here we go. Index, primary index for the ID, and AI stands for auto increment. So we save that. So now, if we take a look, this is our student table. If I click on structure, we have the ID, the F name, the L name, and the subject. Perfect. So let me just reload up localhost. Okay, so the reason why I'm just loading up localhost is because I have my Apache system up and running. Now I'm going to jump into Visual Studio. So let's see, I'm going to need... So I'm going to right click, add... Well, actually it's going to be a, not a HTML page, it'll be index. Index.php. Right. And I'm then going to add in another one. I'm going to call it add.php. Okay, so we're going to work on the index page to start off with. This is going to be really simple. I'm going to ahref equals index.php. This is going to be home. I'm going to put a break in it, and I'm going to go ahref equals add php so we add a student so a, and we'll put a line break there and then we'll go ahref equals list.php which is a list of students close off that and we'll put another line break in there okay so we just tab that out so it's more readable so whilst I'm here let's this is going to be our navigation. So technically, you would of course put it into a uh, 
being HTML5, you put it into a side of nav field so you can apply styles and all that to it. But that'll just help separate it. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy that now, go to my add page, paste that in. And I'm going to want a list page as well, so we'll go file, save my add page as list.php. Cool. So now if we take a look on this side, I've got my add, index, and list. Make sure they're saved. Yeah, I'll just save that in there. That's just a Visual Studio thing. And let's go back to localhost. So now if I refresh, excellent. So that's index page, add students up and running, list of students is up and running. Awesome. And the home page is up and running. So add student didn't pop up with its navigation. Better take a look. Um, add, it's because I didn't paste it in there. There we go. And save. Let's have a look now. So if I refresh the ad page, there we go. Home ad list. Awesome. Back to Visual Studio. So now that I've done that, my index is done. So I'll close that page down. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're actually going to have to add stuff in. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a section here. Now inside this section, this is where I'm going to be putting in a form. So my form will have a method of uh, post and it will have an action, so this is where it's going to go once it's done, to resolve add.php. Okay, so we make sure we close off the form as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a label. Um, we'll give it an ID of lab1. So if I wanted to style it up, I can. And inside here, I'm going to go first name slash uh, label. Then I'm going to input type equals text. I'm going to give this a name of F name. And that should be about that. So let's put that in, that in, put in a line break, we'll put one of those in. So the second one is an F name, it'll be L name, because this will be for the last name. Last name, and this one here isn't first name, this is subject. And this guy here, we'll change the subject. So, first name, last name, subject. So, if we jump back over here to our database, first name, last name, subject, that's the three fields that we want to fill out. Now, I've also got to put in one more line, and this guy here will be, i uh, better put a couple of line breaks in. This is going to be our submit button. So this is going to be an input type equals submit. And, um... Yeah, let's just give it a simple value. Value of add student. Okay, so let's save that. And then let's jump back to our homepage here. Click on add student, first name, last name, subject. Awesome, so that's a good start. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create this add resolve, this resolve add page. Okay, so I'm going to do a file. Save as. Make sure it's the right name. Resolve add.php. Excellent. So check there, it's all saved. Good. Now, this form stuff I don't need, so we'll get rid of that. But now, what I will do is I'm going to put in my PHP code. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use variables to collect the information. So fname equals dot sign underscore post. And I'll just copy that part. So this is the F name, dollar sign L name, um, dollar sign L name, space, and that'll be L name and dollar sign subject is subject. Oops. Subject. Works better if you spell stuff. Now, I could now echo, so using echo, I could echo out the entire variable, so I'll sign fname dot lname dot subject, that would all just give it all as one thing, with pretty much no um, 
no real correlation in it per se, so it wouldn't look pretty. So what we're going to do is we're going to try this. We're going to go echo pre, okay, and then we're going to close it off. Echo pre, right? So pre basically means at the current format. So I'm going to do print underscore r bracket also underscore post like that. Excellent. So let's save that. Jump back to our page here. So go home, back to add student, and we'll have Fred Durf. Subject will be maths, and we'll hit add student. So this is the array that gets transferred through in the post capability, Fred Durf maths. Awesome, just what we want. So that's a good start. Okay, so now we're taking information from one page to another page. Now we actually have to put it into the database. So to do this, over here I'm going to create a new folder I'm going to add a new folder and I'm going to call it functions and then I'm going to create a file alright so I'm going to go add new HTML and this one's going to be functions.php okay so now inside this functions I'm always going to have just straight PHP code so this is where I'm storing my functions so they're external so they're useful so the first thing I've got to add is this function for connecting to my database. Now to save seeing me, seeing me type that all up, here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, so let's just quickly run through this. So these are variables, it's collecting this information. Okay, so there's the username, the password, the database. This is all the information that we put into here. Okay, so student DB, remember the user, student, password, all that stuff, that's all here. So now we save this. Now in resolve add, we actually have to make this page link up. So what I'm going to do is up the top here. Right, always open and close. I'm going to go and include uh, include underscore once bracket functions slash functions.php okay so that line basically says from here include everything that I do here and then I want to run db link now I'm going to save both pages all pages come back to here now if you look at this this basically says connect up to my database or crash and if you crash tell me why so Let's go back to this page here. So go back to the home page. I'll go back to add. Um, we'll add Fred Durf and the subject. What do we say? We said maths. Okay, so now we add student. That's a good sign. Okay, so notice how this has come through. I've got no mistakes whatsoever. And, well, it hasn't complained at me. So now I jump over to here. So this is my database and I click on browse. Okay nothing happened. So what that means is that's because I haven't actually put that part in. This means that we have successfully connected to our database. Okay, so now that we've filled in that form and we've come to this page notice how everything still looks the same? It means that the connection to the database has worked and it didn't crash. So that's good. So we're gonna go back one so we keep that stuff there. So this part here works. We've connected to our database. Now what I'm going to do is after here is we're going to put in a function to insert the user. So this is going to be called insert user and I'm going to put in dollar sign f name, call sign dollar sign l name and the dollar sign subject. Okay. Now this is a function. So what happens is I have to write a function now. So we'll go back to the functions page. same type of deal as before this is a function I prepared earlier let's have a look so insert user notice capital here capital here first name last name subject these don't have to match up but for ease of use it does help okay now we're inserting into the student table to the database we've connected to in the following fields the UID do I call it UID? 
I think I called it just ID. I called it ID. Okay. So what we do is we fix that. So it's ID F name L name subject value null. Right. So remember ID is auto increment. So when we insert this, it's going to automatically update. Uh, first name last name subject. And then it's going to work. If it doesn't work, it will die and crash on us. So let's save. Come back to here. Oh, we'll just go again. We'll go add student. Fred Durf Maths Add. Okay, so no errors. Good sign. Let's jump into here. Browse our database. And there we go. Fred Durf Maths. Awesome. So now we can go back home. Excellent. So we've got one student. We'll just add another one and we'll go um, Jane Doe. She does English. So we'll add her. Excellent. We'll add one more. And we'll go Peter Smith and he does maths as well. And last but not least, we will have uh, oop, Jean Gray and she does science. Science. Excellent. So we add that. Awesome. So now, if I jump back into the database and do a quick show, that's all my information. Each of my students gets a unique number. This number is specifically for them. So that's good. So we've now added a student. Now, we want to make list all students actually do stuff. So I'll go back home. We'll go to resolve add. This bit of code, right, so this bit right here, from the top to the bottom, all this PHP stuff. This is critical, so we want all that. So I'll copy that, go into my list, paste it there. Okay, so now I've got a connection to the database. And inside this section, okay, we're going to put in another function, and this function will be show all. So as you guessed, we're now going to create a brand new function. So my functions file here. Just remember to make sure everything's between the two PHP files. So here's my function show all. So let's just run through this, shall we? So we're resulting. So select star from the student table, right? While it's not the end of the data in there, do the following. Pull all this information out. Okay, the ID, the F name, the L name, subject. Then display it in this manner. Okay, so I'm going to save this stuff. Let's jump back over to here. Let's hit list of students and see if it works. No. Why did that not work? Let's have a look. List. Because it's not inside PHP. So always make sure you put stuff inside the correct area. Okay, so that's what happens when you have PHP not inside PHP. You just get the code. Pointless. So let's go back to home, list of students. Right, so undefined variable functions on line 29. That's good. All right, so as you can see, stuff starts happening. We start to see errors. Um, so that means I have made a mistake around here, I would suspect. Okay, so the error. As it says, undefined variable ID. So if I look in Visual Studio here, variables UID, I only called out ID. So we're putting UID here. Save. Oops, wrong one. Come over to here. Go back to home. List of all students. There we go. So that's their ID. That's their name. That's the subject they're in. Excellent. So that's a good sign. So that's the start of what we want to do. So that's showing us all the information. Now, what we're going to add to this is we're going to add a couple more things. So inside here, we're going to add a href equals, hmm, let's go with delete first, delete.php, and that's going to be delete slash a and then we're going to go a href equals edit.php and we're going to have the word edit there 
slash a. Right, so if we're going to do that, we might as well put that in a span as well. We'll go span style equals margin hyphen left of 20 pixels. Close that up, put that there. Slash span. And while we're at it, we might as well put a margin right on as well. Margin hyphen right. 20 pixels. Okay, so let's see what that does. Save, go back to our listing here, hit the refresh. And now we've got delete buttons and edit buttons. Okay? So this is a good start. But the interesting thing about this is those deletes and edits aren't quite precise enough. So what we have to do is we now have to add to the end of things like our delete. So we put in a question mark and we'll go ID equals single quote dot dot single quote dollar sign UID. And we just copy that and we stick that at the end of our edit one as well. Okay? So what this does is it puts the unique ID number for each of our rows onto each of those. So I'm going to save that, come back to here, we'll refresh it. So now if I click, uh, I haven't got the pages, so we better quickly make a page. Um, functions, let's go to our list. Okay, let's go file, uh, save list as, we'll just do our delete, delete.php to start off with. And what we'll do is we'll open up our edit, I mean our add, and then we'll do a file, save add as edit.php. Okay, so that gives us those pages. So now if I click on delete, notice how up the top where it says localhost delete PHP ID equals 1 here. Then of course we go back to our list page, then we'd click on say Peter Smith. His ID is now 3. If I jump to the edit, his ID is now 3. Back to list of students. Click on Gene Gray's edit, ID is 4. Okay? Those numbers relate to these ID numbers. So these are unique numbers specifically to those um, people. So, now that we've got that, let's look at the next section, which will be... Um, let's do editing, okay? So this is our edit page. Notice this is the exact same as the add page, but we're going to steal some bits and pieces. So we're going to take our database link stuff because we're going to want information out of the database because we're going to be nice about this, okay? So we've now made a connection to our database. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this dollar sign F name and it is going to do this function. Okay? Now, the function, which I'm going to put in the functions page in a second, is designed to be precise. Okay? So, let's get the dollar sign UID, because we need that. So, dollar sign UID is assigned. Now, when we do a form, there are two ways of transferring information it's the post or the get. Okay, now post stays in memory, get goes into the address bar. What we've done here, when we click on this stuff here, notice how it's gone up here into the address bar? We're now forcing it to be a get. So from here, this we're going to dollar sign underscore get the ID. Okay, so this now means that whatever ID number comes up, that's what we get. So dollar sign UID. Excellent, done. The UID field, this is ID in the database table. The database table we're working on is student. And because this is the F name, what we're going to do is we're going to feed in F name here. So that's one. I need the L name and I need the subject. So it's L name and subject. Modify it here and modify it here. Right, so now we better make this return single details. 
Now, this returns single file details. Let's jump over the functions and paste. Let's have a look. So, we're asking for information. Okay, creating a variable and I'm assigning it nothing to start with. So, what we're doing is we're selecting everything from the table, right? So, the table that we tell it to, because we could use this function on any table, off the UID field where it matches. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring back one item. So let's bring back one single piece of information. So in this case, in the first one here, what we're doing is returning the F name. So that's going to say, go through here, once you match the ID of that person, bring back the F name of that person. This, right, this basically says that this resolves something. And whatever you resolve, I want you to put into this uh, variable. Okay. And now, because I've got it in a variable, what I can do is I can put that in here into my input field. Now, this is probably not the most elegant way of putting it out, but it will work. Okay. So this is basically saying I have a singular block of PHP and all I want to do is echo the first name here and this is in the value field like so. So now if we save that, let's just check to make sure it works. So I'll go to list of students, let's click on Jean Grey. So we're hoping that Jean appears in the first name box. Excellent. So now let's get back to our code and then what we do is we take this bit and then we just paste that into there and we paste that to there okay so this is the L name and this is the subject excellent and this isn't actually add a student this is now edit student and this will go to resolve edit PHP and we're going to go ID equals we're going to put some PHP here PHP and we're going to go echo but also UID and we'll close that off alright so let's save that come back over here let's edit Jean Grey so let's have a quick look so we've got Gene Gray Science Edit Student. Let's have a quick look at the source code that the system gets and we're looking at ID 4. Excellent. So now when we click on Resolve Edit, it's going over to the correct page. And we'll give Resolve Edit capital E. Okay. So, from here let's take our edit page and we'll go File save edit as resolve edit.php okay so this is our edit page if I jump into here do a listing of my students I should be able to click on edit and get this information filled out now if I click on edit here nothing happens because I haven't actually fill that out. So what we're going to do is we're now going to create our resolve edit. So this is our resolve edit. I've got a couple of PHP stubs in the right spot that I want. This is our index up and running. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to get the um, get a connection to the database and get the information out of the uh, posted stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in this code. Okay, so this is the ID which gets passed through the top and this is the information that gets posted. So to check that we can do echo pre, we did this um, back in the add edit okay so we do echo slash pre, did it again and in between the two of those we go echo uh, print underscore, ah oh, not an echo, I need a print underscore ah oh print underscore r bracket also underscore post close bracket 
So let's save that. Come back to here. Let's edit Jane Doe. We'll hit edit here. And the information comes across. Awesome. So we'll go back to our list of students. Let's pick on Jane Doe again. So now we're waiting on this page. So now we're getting ready to come into here. All our information is coming to here. So what we're going to do is basically just going to work on the assumption all the information that comes across is we're going to update it with this stuff here. Right, so this is a function that's going to update one particular student. That UID that we get, student field, any ID field and so forth. Now that you can see that, I'm going to give you the function for updating. So we'll copy that, go to my functions, paste that in. Okay, so this is updating precisely what it is that we need to get. Okay, so let's save that and come back in here. So let's do a quick show here. So we've got Jean Grey doing science. Who do I have? Oh, I've got Jane Doe English. Uh, Jane Doe English. So let's see. If I do a list of students, we'll go back to Jane Doe Edit. Let's change Jane Doe from English to Science and click on Edit. Okay, so all this is coming to play. Now if I go to List Students, Jane Doe is now doing Science. Okay, so we've jumped into here and we've changed her from English, so if I reshow the database table, to Science. So that's going to work for all of them. So Jean Grey, she might jump out of Science and go do um, English. So I'll edit that. List of students. Jean Grey is now doing English. Excellent. So all this information here in the database can now be updated specifically. Okay. So now that we've got that, let's work on our delete. So once again, this is all based on this function of updating precisely. So what we do is we jump back to our list. We did our show all. Okay. So I'm following it through again. Show all we were looking for the delete page which we have here okay so that's got our link up and so forth now when you look at our function here right notice how it's still bringing this across so same as the edit we need to get this ID so we can just copy and paste that code across right so we've got that there so we know who we're going to delete we're not using the show all what we're going to do is we're going to use another function called remove data specific. Okay. So let me just check this for a sec. Excellent. So from here, we're actually going to change this a little bit. Right? So this particular function I had originally designed is for removing you know, precisely. So what we're going to do is going to remove this field table. We're going to use the UID and the table. Okay. So this is the UID that comes into play. And from here, we're deleting it out of the student table. Okay, so we'll save that. Let's go grab this function. Let's go into our functions here, and then under here we're going to add this guy in. So, because I've removed the field, I can delete that guy out, and delete from table where the ID equals UID. Okay, so what that means is it should come in and wipe out that particular field. So let's test that, shall we? So let's run into here, rerun our list. Let's get rid of Peter Smith. So we just hit, um, delete on Peter Smith. Doesn't tell me if it's done anything, so we do a list all. Peter Smith is now gone. Notice how the ID numbers changed. That's kind of cool, but it would be useful to actually get another list straight away. So on my delete page, after I've done that, we're going to echo. Actually, I'm just going to do the, uh, what was it, the list all, show all, show all function. So this is why we have functions. So instead of having to rewrite the whole thing, I can just run that. So we'll save that, we'll come back to here. 
Now we're going to delete Fred Durf. So if I hit delete, right, so now we've got Jane and Jean. That's all. So let's add back a couple of new students. So if I come into here and do a quick show, they're gone. So now let's add in a um, Scott Summers, and he's studying uh, leadership. So we'll add the student, and then we'll add another student. Uh, we'll go Hank McCoy, and he's studying biology. Excellent. So we'll add a student, and now if I do my list of students, there we go. So that's our two new ones at the end. Leadership biology, same type of deal. I can jump into here, change information to that, and that is that. Excellent. There we go. So that's a full-blown database system for you.